Welcome back to the stream, guys. Jay here as always, and today we're going to be continuing on with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. We're still in the first game, but we're going to be picking up right where we left off last night and continuing the case to save Miles Edgeworth. So, uh, yeah. I hope you guys are ready because, from what I understand, it's about to get really kind of crazy. But we're on day two, and we're at the in investigation portion. I am starting a little earlier today because I honestly think I'm going to need it. <laughs> so, yeah, let's get uh, right into the game. December 26th, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. Maya. Hey, Nick, it's you. I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day, okay? It's a relief. Hey. Why, why do you do that anyway? I don't know. I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sis was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, let's talk to her. Have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Detective Gumshoe was here just now. He said, seeing as this is your first offense, we'll let you go after questioning. Oh, and he wanted me to get bail money ready. You can pay for me, okay? Huh? How much? I don't know. I guess they'll send you a bill or something. Why do I picture giant bales of money every time I hear the word bail? Yeah, kinda. Kinda. Any luck with Mia? None. I can't get through to her at all. I tried. I really did. I don't know what to do. I think I probably shouldn't have stepped, uh, stopped my training. Hmm. She sounds like she really did do her best. I should check and see if there are any waterfalls in the local area. I wonder if I'll ever see my sister again. I'm sure you will, kid. Do I present anything to her? Make her mama? My mother? I've shown her the picture. I'm not sure. Not so sure it was the right. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry. I fresh out of ideas. Alright. Well. Hi, Shion. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Okay. Uh. Let's check over here. It's like December 26th, right? Go to law offices. Sure is quiet here with nobody around. Alright, I have to get Maya out of the detention cell soon. How do I do that? Criminal Affairs, maybe? December 26th, Police Department. Criminal Affairs. Detective Gumshoe's not here. Gumshoe's at the scene again today. Huh? Oh, really? He's a live wire, that one. He got into a fight with the chief for not following protocol. What following protocol? I bet he wouldn't help them build the case against Edgeworth. Alright, uh... What do I do? Go talk to him? Hey, hey guy! Guard the visitor room, he hasn't moved an inch since he came in. Real pro. There's nothing else to talk about. What do I present? Like... I show her this? Isn't that the large photo Lada was talking about? Uh-huh. Huh? It's nice and big, but you can't really see the faces any clearer, can you? Good. Currently trying to get the hidden trophies in Monster Hunter. Nice! How many more do you have to get? Um... I want to be security. If you really exist... Well, I'd say a photograph is pretty good proof. Once this trial is over, let's get some fishing poles and go down to the lake. 
Even if there is a monster in that lake, fishing poles sounds like a bad idea. Oh. Sorry, I'm fresh out of ideas. I don't exactly know what to do to get her out. Let's... Shit, I don't want to examine. Let's go, uh... The Gord Lake, I guess. Hi, baby. December 26, Gord Lake Park entrance. There are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around in the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe was here today. Well, he, we already were told that he was here. December 26, Gord Lake. Haven't seen Larry around today at all. Probably off pay, paying through the nose on a date with the lovely Kayans. Um. The woods? Summer 26, Gordon Lake Woods. Oh, oh, Gumshoe! Oh, uh, yeah, there's just a man we're talking to. I'm done crying over that Game of Thrones episode, but it ended okay. For now. <laughs> Game of Thrones is gonna make you sad, boo. Uh, I feel so bad <laughs> for you. But just know what? I've had all the same feelings that you're feeling now. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. The trial today, it, uh... Yes, what about the trial? Well, I was going to say, good show, but it wasn't really all that. Though, you did save Mr. Edgeworth, I guess. I just wasn't sure how to thank you, you know? Uh, thanks? Tomorrow. Oh, let's get Maya Faye out. I wanted to talk to you about Maya Faye. Ah, she's not out on bail yet? That's strange. I told them to let her go as soon as they had their report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her. Seeing her getting dragged out by the bailiff. I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Mr. Edgeworth, he was so moved, I saw his lips trembling. There's four or five hidden ones I got to so far, but one is tricky, though. I'm almost done. Nice, Sheehan. We need to save Edward so I can sleep happy. But do it. <laughs> really. Cold as ice, Edward. He was really grateful for what she did, you know? <coughs> Detective Gumshoe. Any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? It sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Alright, he said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. That Von Karma, I hate that man. Not even gonna lie to you. I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh, who was it? S sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Right. Alright, I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I've never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does? And him becoming a prosecutor, and him being scared of earthquakes, it all started with that incident. The DL6 incident. Yep, that's the one. Fifteen years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. I'm gonna head back to the station. I'll get the report on Maya and get her out of there as soon as I can. Thank you. Oh, wait. Um, I was wondering, how much is bail going to be? Don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is close in the hole now. Go, Edgy! What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful to her for what she did. Hey, pal. Well, don't forget to go pick her up, okay? Hmm. Maybe I could get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. <laughs> Alright, let's go get Maya. 
I'm pretty sure that's what we're supposed to do. Hey Nick, you finally came! They just finished the paperwork. I'm free to go! I'm free at last, huh? Those in interrogators were really mean. They were like, okay, what did you do this time? Like I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for the bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. I guess so. <laughs> Let's go back to Gord Lake. December 26, Gord Lake Park entrance. There aren't many cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct working up the case against Edgeworth. Hmm. Hey, y'all! Hey, it's Lotta! Y'all really did it today! What did we do now? Nah, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection you might say. I realize that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. Lotta. So you see, I went to I want to make it all up to you. Make it up. Okay. Ooh, I wonder how she's gonna make it up. Maya is cute. I, I like her character. What did you think of the trial? To be honest, I was doing it half just to say I'd been a witness. Even though I didn't really see anything. I kind of convinced myself I had, though. I'm sorry. I know I caused y'all a lot of trouble. Well, memory is tricky. Vague little thing. Yeah, I sure know that now. I'll be fine the next time I witness a murder. Please don't witness any more murders. Right? You mean the first time you witness a murder? Ugh. What about Gordy? Right. Well, the way I figure, the child's only stroking the flames of Gordy fever. I'll get my exclusive photos and rock it to start him. Alright, Lotta. You go, girl. <laughs> you go, girl. She's lucky she's not in jail for lying. She really is lucky for she's not in jail. I wish I could be a, an investigative photo photographer too. Finish your spirit medium training first. Lotta, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see, I actually I got a bit of information for you. What? That Von Kama didn't want me to say nothing about it. What information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. E exchange? Um, I thought this was to make it up to us, right? I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Uh, hey, I see you thinking, my, how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. But let me tell you, most southerners are way more sophisticated than that. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, what will it be? Are we gonna deal or not? What, what do we do, Nick? Uh, deal. We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have a choice here. Okay, how much? Uh -huh. You can put you off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob you the poor. Uh, the only fair exchange for information is information. That isn't good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Whoa, 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 Gordy! But, but Gordy doesn't... I mean, Gordy might not exist. 
But I'm bringing my group that shows he don't. Uh, I'll be keeping watch from my, the car, okay? You see something? Y'all come to me first. Got it? Uh, okay. Hey, right, see y'all later. How the fuck are we supposed to find information on a thing that might not even exist? Okay, Nick, let's go hunting. <laughs> hunting? You don't seriously mean... Gordy, I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay, and how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we could find a monster myth specialist? I... I wouldn't... I... Oh, fucking hell. What is that now? December 26th, Gord Lake, Public Beach. What... What's that? The... The Steel Samurai, Nick! Yo, Maya! Larry! What the heck is that? Oh, it was my girl Kayance's idea. She was all, if you like, put this here, it would be, like, really cool. Dude, she gave it to me, along with that banner. Wow, that's real impressive. She could find those for you. Boats? Yeah, I'm gonna go check the boathouse after I'm done with, uh, Larry. Well, she knows a lot of people. And that show finished now, so she got them for free. Right. Edgeworth. Yo, Nick. What happened with Edgy? Well, we made it through the first day in court, alright. I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Huh? Hey, Larry. Did you know Mr. Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Huh? That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. Is his girlfriend the prop girl? Uh, no, like, I don't think it's the prop chick, but... Like, she sounds far more expensive than the, the, the prop girl. <laughs> no, really. Well, we were only in the same class for a little bit. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right, when the DL6 incident happened. Don't look like Larry knows about it, though. Hey, Larry. Why did you get that big thing? Ah, oh, the big guy. I've had that for about a month, yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. And why wasn't it here yesterday? Uh, oh, oh, right. The, the compressor was busted. Compressor? Yeah, it's that little unit on my by my hot dog stand. That's what I use to put air in the Steel Samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh, and here I thought you'd inflated it by yourself. Huh. Is there anything we could... Leave? Thank you, Overwatch, for updating. That's the guy that's selling my hot dogs faster than I can cook them. Do you think Gordy really exists? Nah, I think somebody probably saw something else that they thought just thought was Gordy. But I'll keep selling samurai dogs until the truth's out. Huh. I don't think I really have anything else. Maybe this. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about... Or this. Okay. I think we could probably move on. We'll go over to the boat rental place. The blast and the thing, it was that thingy. <laughs> Do you think Gordy was the silver samurai? It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop is closed or good. Well, with the murder on the lake and all, 
they're probably just taking a vacation until it blows over. I get it. Small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. They're probably closed because of a murder. <clears throat> there are some boats floating on the dock. The murder took place on a boat from this dock. Apparently, the police took away the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's a space for one more boat at the dock. There's nothing here. Why? There's a more forest. Don't have any clues. Yeah, there's nothing here yet. Um... Uh, oh. Hey, y'all. Well, y'all find anything about Gordy? Oh, um, no, nothing. Well, keep moving. It gets cold out here at nighttime. It, it is a little chilly. I, I think I have to sneeze. Oh, whoa. No, you don't. Oh, oh shit. We set off the camera again. The compressor blew up, making the blast noise, and that would send that flying into the water. It was too... It was too far for anyone to see, clearly. Hello, I'll say sil Silver Samurai ten times fast. Well, for one, it's not Silver Samurai. I made a mistake. I apologize. It's Steel Samurai. I told y'all no sneezing. See, I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. A trigger on one of those Von Karma's finger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry's nice, but what about my film? Nick, pay the lady. Sob. Oh, what happened? I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. Testifying is serious business. That's why I decided not to take about that case anymore. Talk. Huh? Oh, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that at least. Like I said, I traded for the dirt on Gertie. Look under the uh the video. And you, you I added a little pet thing to it so you guys could actually like pet it and stuff. What are you going to do if Gordy doesn't exist? I'll quit being an investigative photographer. What? After all, I only have one photo to my name so far. Was it a good one? You bet. A UFO. A UFO? Anyway, if I can't get a career making photo this time around, then that's it. I'll quit and go back to school. So you really are a university student? Yeah, well, I'm taking a break for a bit. Right. Uh, what are you going to do? Oh, fuck. Okay. That's probably unmarked for us to come back with information on Gordy. Okay. Um... Uh, damn it. What do we do if there's nothing? Like, absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's effing cute. <laughs> I, I guess so. Let's go back uh, to the detention center and see if we can see Edgeworth. Looks like Edgeworth isn't questioning. Let's come back later. I guess so. Ugh. Seven twenty-six police department. Oh, hey there, pal. What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait, you didn't go and do something that's gonna hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again. What do you mean, again? Whatever, have a seat, pal. <coughs> I'm here for you if you need anything, besides money, that is. 
Okay. How is the investigation proceeding? It's not, really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident. And the guy who got the loan suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case. Robert Hammond. They're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. And Edgeworth never talks about his past. I bet they'll drag that out of and hit him with it in court tomorrow, too. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I gotta admit it. It doesn't look good, pal. Say, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gordy? The monster down in Gord Lake? Not personally, no. Well, we're looking for it. Huh? Are you out of your minds? Eek. You got time to go wild monster hunting? How about doing a little questioning for me then? Oh. Detective Gumshoe is scaring me, Nick. She's crying. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lada. Nick, try telling him sooner next time. Uh, sorry. Huh. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid you aid your search for Gordy. Uh huh. I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Oh? Really? What is he gonna give us? You can take whichever one you like. Yes, please. Okay, give us the goods. Oh my god. What oh my god? Why oh my god? Libby, you can't say oh my god without saying anything afterwards. Hold on now. Everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, missile. What? Missile? He's a canine police dog, still in training. Missile! Missile! Here, boy! Aww! He's so cute! Here he is. Hey, he's cute! Look, Nick, cute dog! Cute dog. And this will help us. Ow. <laughs> Next secret weapon number two. A fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal pole. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? You never know till you trap, huh? <laughs> okay, this next one is the last one. Please, I'm already overwhelmed by our choices. Secret weapon number three, a metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to find it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. It might have been eating soda cans. Well, which will it be? Um, can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. I, I can't make up my mind either, for the totally opposite reason. Oh, well, I suppose I can't hurt The dog ain't gonna do anything for us, neither is the fishing pole, so... Uh, I'm just gonna take the metal detector. my ass. They are dragging Gumshoe into something as dumb as monster finding. Oh, <laughs> yeah they are. Borrow that metal detector. Sure thing, pal. I'm not sure what we're going to find with this. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything is possible. Anything. We got a metal detector now. Can, can we use it on gumshoe? As you can see, it's a metal detector. We use it to look for bullets in the ground. If you can find that monster with it, all the better. I'm not so hopeful. I mean, I guess it's back to Gord Lake? Oh, the third missing bullet. Oh! Okay. Let's, uh... 
Let's move around here. I want to hit him with it. Sorry, Nick. I don't know these things. Okay. Let's go back to where the boats are. Oh! Oh, it's working! The net. It's beeping! The metal detectors found something! So it's loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Nick! Look! Oh! Uh, an air tank! Uh, the valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. My first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? Oh, uh, I'll hunt it. Oh, wait, wrong game. This ain't Monster Hunter, Sheehan. <laughs> and second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh, huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like a string of flags. Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. Air tank of dubious value retrieved. Huh. Let's go back to this dumb fuck. <laughs> hey, buddy. What? An air tank? What about it? Sorry. I wanted to ask you about this air tank. Is it yours? <laughs> Say, is this air tank yours? But why would I have a thing like that? <laughs> Look, see how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. M it must be a coincidence. There's strings of flags everywhere these days. Oh, he's lying. They're like elementary schools. And use car dealerships. Look, wh why would I need a tank anyway? You used this to inflate that, didn't you? Uh, inflate what? What else? That big puffy steel samurai. No, no, why would you go asking me a question like that? Oh, he's twitching. He's twitching. Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right, right. Actually, um... See, the compressor I always used was on the fritz. So I tried using the tank to inflate it just once. And, uh, it didn't go so well. As I suspected... I don't want to ask more about it. It didn't go so well? Uh, yeah. Do you think you could be a little more specific? C come on. Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us, tell us. Fine. Whatever. It's like what I said, the compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill up the silver... The, the samurai up with that. And then... BAM! Gordy is that thing told you to bring more people because your girlfriend is expensive. Gordy is that thing. <laughs> Look at it go! The valve busted open and made this incredible noise. And that tank there took off like a rocket. And it took my poor deflated steel samurai with it. What? Off into Gord Lake? It sure scared me out of my gourd. That's for sure. Um, so the tank and the steel samurai you were trying to fill up flew away. What happened next? Well, all that happened in the 20th or so, 20th, a week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So I went out every night in a boat looking for it. I mean, Chaos gave me that Steel Samurai after all. The newsletter. I'll, I'll flash it to him. And when did you find it? 
just the night before last. The night of the murder. He was on the lake the night of the murder. It flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before last was the night of the murder. Exactly! Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. But you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know about what happened? No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Gordy! Oh, we found Gordy! <laughs> no, 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 we don't need to move, we need to talk. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I've got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me? Uh, should I say we found him, or Gordy doesn't exist? I'm gonna say we found him. Huh? Gordy? Oh, we found him already. What? I haven't seen any monsters yet. Uh, yo, y'all for real? Gordy really exists? Wait. I need proof. You get a photo. I have proof. Of course I have proof. No fair, Nick. It was when I went to the bathroom, wasn't it? That's when you made contact with Gordy. Enough jabbering around. Let's see your proof. <laughs> Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here, a hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine tried to fill it. He used this air tank, and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently, it made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang? Uh, the tank along with the still deflated samurai fell into the lake at the same time. Oh god, a couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Oh, we found Gordy! Wait, so you're saying that Gordy is really the steel samurai? Well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. I'm sorry, Lotta. Nah, it's okay, you win. I'll give you y'all info like I promised. Poor Lotta. Oh, we got the case info, this is great. So, tell us this information you have. A promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path here. Boat rental? There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Lada. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah, the night of the murder. My camera quit twice, you know. Wait, so you have another photo? Well... Yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just a lake. I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. Oh, it might not be helpful at all, but... Here, take it. We finally got the second photo. Even though it doesn't have anything in it, it could still probably help us. Bye now. Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Bye, Lada. Poor Lada. It's all Larry's fault. The legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry. 
familiar to all who know him, or for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. 11.50. Huh. I gotta check that picture out. Is that what it said? Someone should whip that butts into shape. Shows an empty lake taken automatically on 1224 at 11.50. Huh. What could the, the bang be? It proves Larry wasn't on the lake, though. Yeah, but Larry said he went home before 12. So he could have already pulled out on that lake. Pulled off the lake already. And it proves the murder happened on the 25th. Are you sure it happened on the 25th? Or was the bang another gunshot that happened on the 24th? Okay. We gotta go here. <coughs> boat rental shop. I uh, hey Nick. This is the boat shop that Lotta was talking about. You're right. It doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Well, let's go check it out anyway. Uh do we move? Oh, yeah! Oh, <gasps> it's a birdie! December 26, Caretaker Shack. Meg, is that you? Eek, hey! Is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Um, what? No, Meg, you handle this. Uh... I think I'll leave this one up to you, my... <laughs> Meg! Y yes Finally made up your mind, have you? M mind You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone. Pasta? Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. You make your old man proud. Well, when you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running, an old man like me? Polly, the kids are home! Hello, hello, Spark. Nanette, what is that? The parrot, the one on that perch. Keith, y yes? I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. That man isn't mentally sound, and he's giving us a wet, mo a wet noodle! Wet noodle. Nate, what's the wet noodle? Based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of the, his pasta shop. That's a re relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello, hello, Squark. Uh, yep. Um. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is he the witness? Because... I hope not. <laughs> this man is... He's, a uh, He's a bit touched. He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved? I want to... Examine what I can. These look kind of weird. Oh, there's lots of various fish in Gord Lake, aren't there? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. <laughs> Look, a little safe. Um, it's locked. Wow, he has a television in here, too. Look, Nick, he has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm. That's a great idea. We should do that at the office. We can sit down with our clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. And what? Talk about murders? Oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. 
the bird. Wow, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello? It ignored me. Oh! What? You forgot, Meg? You gotta call her name first. Her name? Polly, how you been? Hello, hello. See? Neat. So the parrot's name is Polly. The erstwhile companion of the boat shop caretaker answers to the name Polly. Why do we need that for evidence? Too bad all she could say is hello. Ha ha ha. Old Polly could say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The secret words? Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, squark. Hee <laughs> hee, cute. Now you just found a new friend. Oh, it only gives me that one option. Okay. I guess we'll go back to talking to him. Uh, wake up, old man. Thank you. Um, a pasta shop? Uh, yep. To think the white odor will live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know. So that makes you two the third generation. Meg? Yes? Tomorrow, we'll start with the secrets of dough tossing. D dough tossing? You too, Keith. Yes. You'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler? The West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg! Yes? You know the best pasta's always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? Uh, right, of course, everybody knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep up this all in the family charade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what it is. Oh god, this is weird. This is really weird. <laughs> um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This is the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. Though now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. That's why I keep them boats out there. Watch it be the bird. Do you really think we'll have to put the bird on the stand? No. I don't think the game's ridiculous, but I don't think we're gonna have to do that. Youngsters these days, darn if I understand them. But what if we do have to put the bird on the stand? I do you think? Really? I'm pretty confused myself. Yeah, me too. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. But this old man is the to witness tomorrow, right? We've got to find some way of getting information out of him. Z. Just saying, the game's been what as is. It has. Eck, my memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everyone everything important to old Polly here. Oh shit. <laughs> you might be right. Everything important. Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to that safe? 1228. Alright. Hey, hey, Polly, watch it, will ya? <laughs> See Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. Uh, I, I can't tell what that emoji's doing, but I'm pretty sure you're mocking me. <laughs> In a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write the number down. Hey, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. Can we open it now? Look, a little safe. It's locked. 
Um, he has nothing on him, but... Can we show him stuff? Maybe. Oh, yeah, there's no maybe. You know who is. Now listen here, Keith. Remember that tricolor pasta we were talking about? A rainbow -y? I figured out the last color we should use. Indigo blue. Indigo blue? That didn't seem to work the way I thought it might. Um... I, I don't know. What do I do? Like, this dude is... I was in here, Keith. Okay. What do you guys think I should show him? Because it's not giving me any more options to do anything. Yeah, it's it's really not doing much. Jack shit. Um. Huh. Do you have a gun? We'll just run down the list. I don't know. It has to be something, right? There are two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. What about Gordy? Does he like Gordy? I think you need to come back when he's not there for the scene. Alright. We'll try to leave and, uh... I guess move out. Um... Maybe we go talk to, uh, Edgeworth now. <laughs> this game is ridiculous. And Edgeworth isn't there. Criminal affairs. Quite possibly. Oh yeah, we could tell him about Gordy. Police officer. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe wasn't here. Now that you mention it, didn't he say he had a meeting to go to? Oh, that's right. Let's come back later. Uh, right and co? Ah, fresh air. I gotta say, freedom feels great. Behave yourself in the courtroom tomorrow, okay? Hee hee hee. This behaving is much more fun. It's not going to be so much fun when Edgeworth refuses to pay your bail again. All right, I'll behave. Oh, dear. Uh, I'll ask her these, but I don't I don't really know what to do from here Well, what should we do? I don't know. I've been in detention this whole time. I think I'll let you decide Oh, any thoughts you want to share? Well, I was in detention all day. I think I'd like more time to think Oh my oh my oh my Oh, what? Oh, let's go check him out. Detect December 26, Grossberg Law Officers. Apparently, Mr. Grossberg is on vacation today. Uh, I guess I could come back tomorrow if I need anything. Uh, expensive looking mahogany, bookshelves filled with expensive books. Huh, funny. They don't look like they've ever been read. Solid mahogany desk. The wood's been polished to a deep luster. The second and third bullet is missing still. I know. What? <laughs> um. Table for clients. Hmm. An elegant ebony case, and if I'm not mistaken, that lighter's made of solid gold. Even I can tell someone here's got money to burn. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to any new viewers. Uh, you've come at the right time because I don't really know what the hell to do. So, we're bouncing around and all that nifty stuff. Huh. <sighs> Detention center. I guess it's back there. Gord Blake. I mean, this isn't going to tell me anything. Maybe Larry knows about the the bird. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. 
Okay. There has to be something. Maybe her? That's even if she's still here. I don't think Lotto takes very good care of her SUV. It's covered with dents. Can't believe anyone would drive their cars down here. Mm. Beep beep around somewhere. I can't. I can't, like, use that. It, it used it on its own the last time. It has to be here. It, it has to be somewhere out here that... Yeah, no, there's nothing I could do with that. I have to be able to do something in here. <sighs> uh, I'm not entirely sure. There has to be something I could show him. Because he's... All, like, he's all out of options to talk. So, we're kind of screwed. And nobody else is popping up. And he thinks I'm his damn kid for some reason. You checked a bird. That's gross that there's all... This fishing pole looks expensive. Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny he doesn't look like the type who keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop here. Can you show... No, I can't show the bird anything. The bird, it's... Uh, I could do this with the bird. That's about it. But there's just nothing else. Look at a little safe. It's locked. Polly, Polly. What's your name? Polly, Spark. Hee hee, cute. I don't know... I don't know what to do. I'm I am stumped. Like Like this guy this guy is giving me nothing. And the other lawyer's gone. Edgeworth isn't at the detention center. So maybe if I look at no I can't look at Polly like that. Um, yeah, we showed him pretty much everything. Maybe the picture of her mom? I, I have nothing. Something about indigo blue. That's a post the uh, uh, color of the poster he wants to make. It has, I've showed him everything and it's done nothing. Huh. I don't know. Like, all these are checked off. And we examined everything in a room. I mean, it's something that doesn't the steel samurai look a little out of place. I mean, it's so huge. Guess it's good advertising. Somewhere the Steel Samurai just doesn't work for me. Huh? Really? It looks pretty well made. Huh. Still a novice, aren't you, Nick? Really? True connoisseurs like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. These Steel Samurai fans are obviously in a league of their own. What's this machine? Uh, it's a presser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to know any of that. I don't... Huh, what? You mean, you don't 
nose or wore the eyeglasses. Summer, huh? I guess we're on lunch. Okay. He's all. Sorry, Nick, I don't know much about that. Why is his hand covered? I have returned it from the Avengers watching it. Okay then, Indy. Welcome. We are pretty much stumped at the moment. Um. Lot of the position. I'm just gonna run down the line with him to make sure anything. That's the guy that's selling me hot dogs. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. He, yeah. Yeah, I don't... I'm not entirely sure what to do. Have you seen it yet, Jay? Also, hello, Libby. Thanks. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it, like, freaking three times now. Oh, what the hell, man? What do I do? Like, there's no way just to use this. Is he back? There, ha there has to be something stupid I'm missing. Something blatantly obvious. Come on. Oh, I hate getting stumped like this. Okay, I won't say anything too much in case someone here hasn't, but I freaking ugly cried, man. Dude, I don't want to hear about crying. I did enough crying with that movie. <laughs> End Endgame was Endgame was amazing. Baby, we still need to watch that. What in the hell, man? What do we do? I have checked everything. Everything. Hmm. Go back to the office to talk to Maya. We did that. They're both checked. She has no clue on what to do at all either. Oh, what do I do? Maya, look at this. Don't waste time showing me things we have to get. Oh, okay. Hey. Uh, okay, fine. It has to be a board lake. We've done everything. Everything so far. This old guy thinks it's a pasta shop. This freaking. <sighs> By the way, when you're done streaming, let's talk more about that Twitch thing. Yeah, I know. Dude, we'll talk. Um. Was there anything I missed in here? I'm not entirely sure. Fucking hell. I, I wanna ask him about Polly again. Ugh, my memory's got worse of late. Uh, what? That's why I just tell everything important here to Polly. Important. Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 1228. Alright. Polly, watch it, will ya? <laughs> See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. On a criminal mind. I don't... 
I don't know. I'm. I am completely stuck. It's got to be something freaking stupid. Like the freaking badge. That a lawyer's badge? It, yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Yep. I got you figured out now. You're not Keith. Nick? Now's our chance to clear things up. Um, sir? No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg either. We're here investigating a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us. Hmm. A lawyer, huh? Please, mister. Alright, I'll help. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, y'all return to the wet noodle. It'll run the wet noodle. Do okay, fine. We'll run the wet noodle. Okay, we promise. Nick, Nick, are you sure about this? Like, anything to get us this case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I guess so. <laughs> That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Uh, wait, wait. Didn't I just say... You too, Meg. It, yes. She's no help. Hee hee hee. You bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know? No. What was that you wanted to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello. Squirk. Uh, now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? Oh, come on, not again! Oh, yep, I seen this. Uh, you know something about this, sir? Keith. Y yes? It's okay, you can call me Dad. D Dad, you know something about this? Try to save for the bird. I will once I'm, like, done talking to this guy. So far. Safe for the bird hasn't did anything for me. Uh, yep, the other night, out on the lake. Yes, yes. I know all about that. I see it. What? Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose, since you're taking over the shop and all. All right. I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night. Uh, yep. Alright, Indy. It was after midnight, but okay. <clears throat> then I heard this bang, so I looked outside. Then I heard another bang. Oh, shit. A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself, uh, yep. What did he say? Uh, yep. He, he said, uh, yep. How's it going? I'll remember tomorrow by court time, promise. You need to know earlier than that. You know what? Uh, little Terry was just here. Terry? Yep, the kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat, got himself some whiskers growing out of his face. He must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squirt, don't forget DL6. What? 
I want to put the bird on the stand now! <laughs> huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6. The DL6 incident? Hey, Mr. I, I mean, Dad. This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would the bird Polly know about DL6? We have to figure out who that old man is. Oh. What? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. Let's go. Let's go ask Gumshoe for sure. Uh, I kind of want to know about this. My damn self. Called it. Fucking interrogate the bird. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that bird's gonna go on stand. I have a. Fe I feel it in my nuggets. Hey, pal. Long time no see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we wanted to ask you something. Yeah. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Uh huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Edward's father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. To tell you the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Mr. Edward forbid us from reading the file. So I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. You know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Oh yeah. <laughs> Poor bird. <laughs> That bird's gonna get put through the ringer, goddammit! The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Huh? How do you... Hmm, that was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, Detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Huh, sounds suspicious. Hmm. What's that? A parrot? The old man at the boat rental shop's parrot. The parrot knew about that incident. That incident. DL6. What? Oh, we're on to something. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squark, uh, don't forget DL6. Huh? I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her the word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you, you think he might be? I got you. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Though, there is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Oh, we're going to get the DL6 file! Alright, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick, to the records room. I guess it's time we faced Edward's past. Oh, yeah, it is. Now we need to find the DL6 report. What if he's the old murderer, the one that Maya mom claimed? I mean, is it possible? Wow. It's amazing. It's really dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. 
We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6. Nick, I found out where the file is. Oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get it, the right file. <coughs> Case summary. Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts, like a summary. Alright. Summary. Summary. Found it! Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district courthouse. What? Is this the same district courthouse where we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. <coughs> there was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all of the lights went out. Oh, wow. Wow, that was some earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours. That would be scary like that in the dark. Oh shit. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in the elevator. Do you have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim, here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So he was in the elevator with his father. Oh, wow. From the angle of the bullet and other evidence, it could ha not have been a suicide. The murder, the murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Huh? Sounds just like this current case. Suspect data. Got any data on the suspect in here? Hmm. That would be the guy that my mom got arrested. Hold on, this is it. The man arrested as a suspect in DL6 was Yanni Yogi. He was a clerk in the court, apparently. Do you think the old guy is this Yanni dude? Wait, he was shot in the heart and three sh two shots. Yeah. Well, then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived so much so he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. But the victim is the same way. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm, where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. Could be that dude. The guy with the parrot. I wonder if that's Yanni Yogi or whatever. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick, are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get, get it out. You're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? The L6 case file added to the court records. Okay, cool. We have that. We're probably going to have to use it in court, honestly. But, right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. Ah! Dad. 
to be continued! Alright. Save your progress up to this point. Of course we're going to save our progress up to this point. I want to do a little uh, brainstorming real quick. But I honestly think that this dude, dad, or whatever. I honestly think he's uh, he's this missing guy. This Yanni Yogi guy. But uh, honestly, we're going to find this out. I want to finish this case tonight, so... Um, do you guys have any objections to, uh, me playing until this case is done? Because we're going on to the second day into the court now, and it's only going on 10 o'clock my time. Would you guys stick around to see the ending of this court case? I'm gonna wait for y'all answers. <laughs> And we're back in the court room with Sin. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Apparently the prosecution is also ready. Before this, though, I'm going to go ahead and be right back. I can't go, go use the facilities.
Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I actually took the time to order dinner, even though it's like super late. But, yeah. Who is this judge here, anyway? Mr. Von Karmer, your opening statement. Uh, very well. No opening statements, so... Oh, Satan! Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Why? Order! Order! Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Ah, must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. R right. I call my witness, my decisive witness, to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, people. Uh, we're about to take on him for the second time. And I don't exactly know how this will go, because I almost lost the last time. Witness, state your profession. <laughs> I am the proprietor of the restaurant The Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And I also run boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Oh, wait a second. We still haven't heard who this guy is. Objection! Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Alright. The witness will state his name. Uh, well, uh, I'm not really sure, yep. What do you mean? Uh, my memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name can't recall, you say. Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony, then shall we? Witness? Oh, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, God. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. When I heard a bang, yep. When I looked out the window, I just saw a boat just uh, floating on the lake. And then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. <coughs> Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten sec seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now. Uh, yes. But, Mr. Wright? Uh, I'm going to cross-examine. I, I don't know who you fools are, but yeah. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well, you may begin. Ah! I think we pissed off Satan. Excuse me, Mr. Varn Karma? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well, then let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. The night of the murder. Oh, here it goes. Press everything! It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Alright, we all know that. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang. And 
where did the bang seem to come from? <laughs> from the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, yep. Good, continue. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Oh, you Satan. <laughs> was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there. Yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Yep. At the time, that is... At the time. And then I heard another bang. So you heard two gunshots total. Uh, yep. That's what Lana said in her testimony yesterday. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. <coughs> by your window? Uh, yep, by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Tisk tisk tisk. Oh, Satan's not... Satan's not happy. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant, and he was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Uh, are you sure? Uh-oh. Dad! Oh, come on, Keith! You can do it! Dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead. He... As he was walking by, too. Witness. Are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. What in the ever-living hell? This sounds like the size of evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Uh, Connor, he lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Oh, we're being set up, boy. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Yeah, he did say boy, so... Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I'd better act quick, or this trial is going nowhere. Right. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. Are you ignoring the truth of the matter here? Everything in the witness's testimony is true. How do we know that? Huh. Uh, the judge is lost in thought. What should I do? There's an objection. objection. Your Honor. This witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie... Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Erk. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. You know, that makes two of us, Nick. I'm with you, man. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expect expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Polly, Polly! We need to call the bird. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. <clears throat> God damn it. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. 
nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! Back finally. I had to help bring stuff in. Ah, well, that, good boy, Indy. Help your parents, damn it. This court finds the defendant, My, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. What did I do wrong? Yeah, the accused was surrendered to the court immediately. To be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. No, it, it really gave me no damn option to do anything. How the hell do I get past this? That is all. This court is adjourned. No way! Oh, wait! What the hell? Who, who, who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? Larry! <laughs> oh. What are you doing here? Listen, you, you gotta listen to me. I, I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But, but today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Again? <laughs> uh, order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot. Yeah, I did. A gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. And then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Uh, anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. <laughs> what the hell, Larry? This guy is legit the most anime of them all. <laughs> yeah, he is. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. We could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. W what is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Yes! Larry! Larry, you saved our butts! <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? what? The court will withdraw in for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Everything is a waste of time with you, Satan. <laughs> yeah, everything is a waste of time with Von Karma. There you go, Judge. Finally, think it for yourself, right? Right? It's like the only time. Only time that Judge actually thought for his damn self. December 27th, 10.28 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew. I was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Huh. I've seen worse. That right, Edgeworth, you're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? 
Mother Effer, you haven't told us your story. <laughs> We're trying to save you. It, it's nothing. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the word murder weapon? Oh. <clears throat> They'll probably say afterwards. Hopefully. Uh, I want to know more about Edgeworth. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah. This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials. Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. Why are you dressed in fancy clothing on the lake, Edgeworth? That's Edgeworth, dude. He, he, he has to be Alucard. You know this. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. Not t no ten-minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everything's on now, Larry. No, on Larry now. Yep, the dogs are barking. My food got here. Ah! Come in quiet. <laughs> Uh. Sorry about that, people. Uh, December 27th, 10.35 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Damn right! Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything you just saw. On the night of December 24th. Alright, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karmer didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. The night of the murder. The night of December 25th. Judge, idiot. <clears throat> night of the murder. No, it was the night of the 24th, going into the morning of the 25th. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and I uh, found it. So I quietly, quietly slipped the boat back at the rental shop dock. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Oh, it was December 25th morning, to be exact. Not for him. He went home before the 25th. So his gunshot happened before the morning of the 25th. So technically, it was the night of the 24th. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. The photo that shows 1150 no boats. Yeah, I forgot about that. The night of the murder. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something. Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. 
most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. And surprisingly close to the truth in a sense. Proving Larry was right, so the first shot was way before they were out there. Yes, this is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped back, slipped the boat back into the rental shop dock. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figure it was, I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12, yeah? You're not sure? Hey, don't judge me. That Don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sand, sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Everything is irrelevant to Von Karma. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order! Well, Mr. Butts... Oh, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. This the hole in the old man's story, boo. Yeah? Huh. So after I heard that single shot, I went home. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh? Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. I, I didn't press on this thing. So many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Uh, okay, first of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11. When I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, to, so, so to speak. And why were you out on the boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something that I found. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard a bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard the single gunshot, I went home. Okay, what do I do? I pressed on everything. I looked out over the lake, and I didn't see a boat. So it's an empty lake taken automatically on 1224 and 1150. Do you think I show this? No, the music didn't stop. That wasn't right. This evidence is clear. <clears throat> That's not a contradiction to him. He was right. Shit. I don't think that won any points with the judge. Looked out over the lake, but I didn't see any boats. So after I heard the single gunshot, I went home. So you only heard one bang, correct? Oh, wait! No, let me... No, fuck! I went too quick. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm a horrible streamer. No! Oh, I keep fucking up! I know what to do, I know what to do! We gotta present, we gotta present. Okay, maybe I don't know what the hell to do. Please think. I thought I would have to present the gun because if he only heard one shot... The gun was fired three times. 
Are you too? There we go. Do you have anything for maybe? Yep, I do. That's just what I um, presented to. Wait, wait, wait a second, Larry. What? What? You only heard one bang. You're sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And that old man just now said the same thing. Slow down. Oh, well, look at all the things you have. It's... Yeah, I forgot all about what she said. That That's why I just got so confused. I do apologize for that, guys. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? <coughs> Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you got it to treat me nice and stuff, okay? Oh, God damn it. Mr. Butts, what? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Uh... I'm sure... How could... How could you not be sure? <coughs> yeah, well, I... Um... I might have missed the other gunshot. I was uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude. With the headphones. Oh, God, Larry. <coughs> order! Order! And stop that booing! But Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones. Yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio, everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? <coughs> Mr. Von Kammer, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Mm. Well, Mr. Wright, should we continue the testimony? Yeah. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Ah, nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Alright, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. Oh, God. What Larry heard. <coughs> It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud, like... But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. That might be a help. That might be a real help, because if he remembers what the DJ was saying, he could remember what time they were saying it. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe his testimony. <clears throat> Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. But very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. God have mercy on Edgeworth. <laughs> At this point, yeah, somebody needs to have mercy on him. What Larry heard. It's only being alone on Christmas Eve. Let's just press everything first and then figure out what the hell we need to show. So you turned on the radio. Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? 
Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness that was listening to the radio, that is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to it real booming loud, like... Real booming loud? Yeah, you know, and you had headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. But I'm sure I heard the gunshot. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can. Now, I can't prove it, but I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible could, good could knowing what a radio DJ said to us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. Uh, we need all the help we can get. I mean, it's bad enough Butts came to the rescue, and he hasn't been doing all that well. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask him? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. It's almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm. Maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how this helped at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. What the hell? Do you think so? Your Honor, what do you think about the witness's statement? Um, uh, mother... You don't sound very... God damn it. I don't think that one made any points with the judge. What the hell? 1150. It shows an empty lake taken automatically on 1224 at 1150. Overhead map of the guard found weapon. 20. I don't I don't know I don't know where to go from here. I mean, I could press it again, but of course I am. She had a real sexy voice. It's not going to give me any options to do that. What, what do you guys think I should do here? I am completely lost at this point. And I got two more strikes. And then I got to start it all over. Which would suck, because that'll just take more time. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait for you guys to help me out here. I know we pressed everything. Oh god. Listening to it real boom loud, but I'm sure I heard the gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. What did she say? Shut up, on Karma. We should carry her on her. Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the Yeah. So, nobody's got any ideas. I am in on it all by myself. Fine, thank you all. 
<laughs> Another camera took the damn shot. I am fucked here. I am completely fucked. We're gonna have to redo this. What do you mean try to present her thing again? I heard two two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. Okay, the music stopped. That was right. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas. When he heard the gunshot... <clears throat> Indeed, and almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard one gunshot. Shut up, Michael. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. <clears throat> this is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. If you're watching, Mike, uh, kinda can't pick up. Order, order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. But what? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's right. Thanks, lol. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard the gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Oh, this is the only thing I can think of. Honestly. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 25th, 1150 p.m. Oh. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in the photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set up to go off in response to loud noises. Ah, correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard the gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Holy shit. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed and triggered the camera. 
Uh, hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear! <clears throat> well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show him the court evidence if you have any. Oh, God. What do I show here? What the hell do I show here? I heard two sounds like... Two sounds like gunshots after midnight. The murder weapon... Yeah, it was fired three times. If it was shot after midnight twice and once beforehand. This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the first shot fired? Last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. I just said the pistol, my most most logical thing. Yeah, because it was fired three times. That's where we were on the same wavelength there, buddy. Order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. <clears throat> What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Uh huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in that case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. In this case, had the same idea as that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. I yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What the hell was he talking about? What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Test, test, test. Uh, so you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth. Who did the shooting? Who could have done the shooting? Like, who? Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. Why? Like, who the hell... What the hell is this? Like... Uh, there was a gunshot fired on the boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. We all know that much. But who the hell does... Does, um... Phoenix think was the murderer? The distance of the shot was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well... The guilty party has to be the other man on the boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. I say the old man. Edward said that was connected to DL6 or whatever, right? That bird knew about it somehow. The old man must be connected. Well, the old guy is definitely connected, but we don't know how. I honestly think he's that Yanni Yogi guy. But, I mean, there's no proof of that right now. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? 
We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 00, 0 1500 hours. Well, 0.1500 hours. But Larry heard a gunshot at 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. Uh, what? That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat were. I... It would be Edgeworth and the murderer, then. Holy confusing, Batman. Right? It is confusing. But if Hammond was murdered 25 minutes before the boat went out of the lake, then Edgeworth and the murderer would have had to be out there. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Hammond and met Edgeworth. Alright, uh, but I mean, wouldn't Edgeworth know what he looks like? What, what? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. But wouldn't he recognize an old guy? L Ludicrous. Mr. Wright. Tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You you don't know? Ah, again you waste my time. <coughs> I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. Oh shit. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? What? But, well, then where did the murder take place? Should have judged where the murder really took place. If, if it was him, it was here. It's the only place. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. I say it was in the boat shop because Larry heard it on the shore, right? Yeah, because he pulled in, then he heard, despite hearing music. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the murder or the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. Uh, yeah, what the hell is Larry doing? Boating drunk? That night he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, your honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Oh god, this is good! <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? And please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes your honor. Nick, are you sure about this? <laughs> Not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Oh shit! Killed him next to the bird! This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammer. 
then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out onto the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Caretaker. <clears throat> of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Look below the stream. Oh. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Y y yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanation is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Because the first shot... No, but... To create a witness! I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that everything else falls into place, the boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. It, it makes more sense than everything else. <laughs> so it possibly could have been. Jesus. Anybody else watching there, uh, feel free to talk to us in chat. We'd love to hear from you guys. Bailiff, bring out the witness bef from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Holy hell. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edwards, please take the stand. <sighs> Mr. Edwards, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. I bet the caretaker is missing now. You think he just up and ran away? He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important. I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. Jesus, are you psychic? I literally, Libby had just said she bets that the caretaker went missing and the caretaker has gone missing. What? What should I do? But find him quickly. We cannot, we cannot allow him to get away. <laughs> Mr. Von Karmer, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find the witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is the boat shop keeper? Caretaker. I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. 
Very well. Court is adjourned. So, what would you guys like me to do? Would you like me to continue this now? Because it's going to have me save. And then we're going to have to go through another in investigating phase and then the final court. Would you want me to um, continue this until it's done? Or would you want me to save it for another day? December 26th, 27th, 1.22 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah, well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. Hey, what about Larry? That was something else. After this, there's a whole new case, isn't there? Yeah, there's a whole other case after this as well. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. I don't want to finish the game, I just want to finish this trial. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sift through his unique testimony, still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I need to record my tear video, so do whatever you want, bro. It is late, so I'd say wait. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. Up to you, boo. Plus, we need to discuss more of that Twitch thing. Very true. Alright, after this part, we'll, um, I'll let it save and then we'll continue. And then maybe we'll stream it tomorrow. Um, I don't know. But, I, I can't wait till this case is done, honestly. I can't, I, I really hate Von Karma. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. What, what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed. A memory of a murder. Uh, what? You can't leave me like that! That's not cool. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, we're going to end the stream here, uh, but we'll continue it tomorrow. I do want to get done with this case, and that honestly just it made me really want to get done with this damn case and figure out what the hell Edgeworth was talking about. So we'll figure that out tomorrow. I will definitely stream this tomorrow until this case is done. Again, we'll have another investigation and then the trial afterwards so yeah and like last time what the f with the cliffhangers look i'm sorry okay i can't help what the game does but you'll find out more tomorrow so <laughs> but with all that i want to thank everybody who actually came out to the stream and uh you know participated in chat and actually helped my ass out Thank you, Tim, Jen, and everyone else. Thank you, Shion. But, uh, yeah. We'll see you guys in the next one. So, uh, buh-boy.